Hello, dear students. We'll be starting Chapter 10, Earth's Internal Composition and Landforms in Social Science. Now, what is the meaning of composition? It means what it is made up of, what it is inside the Earth and the landforms which are created with it. Our Earth is such a planet on which developed life is seen. When we have studied about all the planets of the solar system, it's only Earth where we can find life. Like the other celestial bodies, the shape of the Earth is round. This also we already know. Celestial bodies, the bodies which are found in the space. Like all of them, Earth is also round. It is constantly changing inside and outside. Now we may not be able to see these changes, but they are happening throughout years. Gradually, you know, every time such small changes happen that ultimately they create big impact. So these constant changes are going on inside as well as outside. Have you ever thought that what is there in the interior of the earth? What is earth made up of? We will answer these questions in this chapter. Interior of the earth. The interior of the earth is made up of several layers arranged one on top of the other like an onion. Now, we all have seen onions, how the, it is having layers. You know, earth is also of that same kind. It's not that one region there is this, other region there is something else. But ultimately, it is consisting of layers. The uppermost layer of the earth is called crust. The layer below our grounds, which we can see whether uh, the land that is called crust it is the thinnest of all the layers now imagine the ground on which we dig and get all those things that is the thinnest layer of the earth and it is called crust it is about 35 kilometers on the continental masses continental masses means the land the region we know about the continents so that land that is continental mass and there the depth is about 35 kilometers the main mineral constituents of the continental mass are silica and alumina it is thus called cl the short form of sil si for silica and al for alumina now if that is for continental mass, what about the uh, oceanic mass or the land, the crust below ocean? We know that even below oceans, we have land surface. It's not that oceans are running deep, I mean, throughout the earth. Though we have not reached all the depth of the ocean, but below oceans also land is there. So there also the crust is there and there it consists of silica and magnesium it is therefore called sema silica si and for ma for magnesium so this you will have to remember crust the thinnest layer or the uppermost layer of the earth which is also the thinnest it is about 35 kilometers continental mast silica aluminum cl Oceanic crust, silica, magnesium, sema. Now let's see the diagram showing the layers of the earth. Here we can clearly see if this is the earth, this is how it consists of. First layer we have the crust, the smallest thinnest region which can be seen, that is crust. Now below crust we have mantle. Not M-A-N-T-A-L, but M-A-N-T-L-E. That is mental. And then we have core. Now, even in core, we have inner core and outer core. Only 0.5% of the size of the earth is a solid crust. You know, if this is the whole earth, only this much. That 0.5% is solid crust. 16% is mental. This yellow region. That is 16% that is mental and 83% is core. The radius of the earth. You all know what is radius. Uh, so that radius of the earth is 6,371 kilometers. Just beneath the crust which is extends up to a depth of uh, 
sorry just beneath the crust is the mantle which extends up to a depth of 2900 kilometers now this is crust below this we have mantle which extends now this depth is still 2900 kilometers the innermost layer is the core with a radius of about 3500 kilometers it is mainly made up of nickel and iron and is called knife n i for nickel and f e for ferrous that is iron so as it is consisting of nickel and iron nickel and ferrous it is called knife the central core has very high temperature pressure and density of matter now this region is the hottest it, we can say that it is so hot like it can be compared to the temperature of the sun let's move ahead with rocks and minerals the types of rocks vary depending on their properties particle size and formation process in terms of formation process rocks are of three types igneous rock sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rock we will study about all these in detail now uh, we when we go to different places when we go to different lands there we find the land form is different the rocks are different now they can be divided into various ways depending on their properties their particle size like the size of uh, those rocks or the particles or uh, whether they are small or large or so and formation process how these rocks are formed so right now we'll be just studying about the rocks based on their formation process in that the first one is igneous igneous rocks means the rocks which are made by fire hot magma cools and solidifies now what is magma we have studied this last year so when uh, in the earth's crust that magma is there due to the heat and temperature that hot magma is there so when that magma cools when the temperature is reduced the magma cools down and hence it instead of just uh, liquid not purely liquid but uh, it solidifies and it is it converts into a rock a rock is formed in this way is called igneous rock there are two types of igneous rocks inner rock and outer rock now before we study more about this let's just understand the name igneous means it is the latin word ignis which means fire so as igneous rock it is made of fire it is made by fire then sedimentary rocks the latin word sedimentum means stable the rocks which have been made made by stability and metamorphic metamorph metamorphose is the greek word which means change in form whose form is changing those are metamorphic rocks now can you imagine lava coming out of the volcano when we started about volcano we already saw that uh, the hot magma which is below the earth's crust and when the volcano erupts uh, that magma oozes out and lava comes so actually the reddish molten magma coming out from the interior of the earth on its surface is lava as we already know that under the earth's crust it is magma but uh, when it comes out when that molten magma comes out and on the earth surface it is called lava when this molten lava comes on the surface of the earth it rapidly cools down and becomes solid the temperature to heat the rock that is too high and on the earth surface that temperature is not there so it quickly cools down and hence it becomes solid rocks formed in such a way on the crust are called extrusive igneous rocks hence the rocks were formed when the lava on when the magma came out of the earth and it solidified so it were made outside the earth surface or outside the earth crust so these are extrusive igneous rocks they have very fine grained structure grained structure means small particles they are really tiny so they have a very fine grained structure for example basalt 
Sometimes the molten magma cools down deep inside the earth's crust. Now, even inside the earth's crust, there are different temperatures, but it is constantly changing. So when the molten magma cools down inside the earth crust. It does not come out and cool down, but it cools down inside the earth crust. Solid rocks are formed and which are called intrusive igneous rocks. So when the molten magma cool down outside the earth crust, they are extrusive and when they cool down inside the earth crust, they are intrusive igneous rocks. Since they cool down slowly, they form large grains. Now, Inside the earth's crust, the temperature is changing, but it compares compared to outside, it is changing slowly. The cooling process is taking slowly. Hence, we will have large grains in intrusive igneous rocks. Granite is an example of such a rock. Grinding stones used to prepare paste or powder of spices and grains are made up of granite. Now, that is an example of intrusive igneous rocks and they are so strong like um, grinding stones grinding stones means that uh, chakki which we have or ghanti so which are used to prepare paste or powder of spices and grains uh, if you have a ghanti or a meal so there the stones which are used they are of granite that was igneous rocks. Next is sedimentary rocks. Rocks roll down, crack and heat each other and are broken down into small particles. Now the rocks are there. They also due to movement uh, of the earth or due to some external forces or for any reason when they roll down, crack and heat each other, they are broken down into small pieces. These sediments, these particles are transported and deposited by wind, water, etc. There are various methods of uh, transporting sediments. So these particles, they are then transported by wind, by heavy wind or water through rivers, etc. These loose sediments are compressed and hardened to form layers of rocks. Now, as time passes, when they come together, I mean, they are joined and they become rock. These types of rocks are called sedimentary rocks because they are made up of sediments. For example, sandstone is made from grains of sand. When the sand is deposited to a certain place and it forms into a rock, we get sandstone. These rocks may also contain fossils of plants. Now, along with the sediments, sometimes the plants or the lifestyle, uh, other living organisms, they are also carried through with wind or water, and they also they are also solidified or they are also become a part of it. This process which we are discussing, it's not taking. Uh, in one year or two years it's taking thousands of years so ultimately these sedimentary rocks they also contain fossils of plants animals and other microorganisms these fossil means uh, they are the remains of dead plants and animals and they're trapped in these layers of rocks next uh, we have metamorphic rocks Igneous and sedimentary rocks can change into metamorphic rocks under great heat and pressure. Now, what was the meaning of metamorphosis? It means which is changing in form. So, these two rocks which we studied just now, igneous rocks and sedimentary rocks, when they change with heat and pressure, they are converted into metamorphic rocks. For example, clay changes into slate and limestone into marble. Limestone is a rock, but uh, when it is heated along with that pressure, it changes into mass marble and clay, the normal clay. From it only, we can make slate. Let's see the process of or the rock cycle. Let's start with uh, magma. Now, this is the earth crust. Below, we have this magma and after the eruption, this lava is happening. 
Through this, we got the igneous rocks. They can be intrusive igneous rock or extrusive igneous rocks. Now, these igneous rocks, when they were broken down or uh, they were taken out uh, and deposited somewhere else, we got the sedimentary rocks. From these sedimentary rocks only, with heat and pressure, this is showing heat and pressure, we got the metamorphic rocks. And along, again, when they are formed a part of uh, the earth is... Uh, Again, throughout the year, we get uh, this magma and this cycle goes on. Here, the opening of the volcano, that is called the crater, the cone is formed and this is the earth. This region, that is called the crust. This is the image of volcano. Let's read about this. You will be surprised to know that one type of rock changes to another type under certain conditions in a cyclic manner. We just saw the cycle. This process of trans transformation of rocks is called rock cycle. You have already learned that when the molten magma cools, it solidifies to become igneous rock. We studied this thoroughly just now. These igneous rocks are broken down into small particles. Those are transported and deposited to form sedimentary rocks. When they are broken, they are small particles, they are they break down into small particles and when they get transported and deposited, they create sedimentary rocks. Now when the igneous and sedimentary rocks are subjected to heat and pressure, they change into metamorphic rocks. They change their form, hence metamorphic rocks. And the metamorphic rocks which are still under extreme heat and pressure melt down to form molten magma. So this is what is happening here. When this metamorphic rock, when they are still getting that heat and pressure, they will not be changing into a rock, but they will be converted into magma. The metamorphic rocks, this molten magma cools down and solidify into igneous rocks. So again, that cycle has started. Rocks are very useful to us. The solid rocks are used for making roads, houses and buildings. Roads are, rocks are made up of different minerals. Minerals are naturally occurring substances which have certain physical property and definite chemical composition. This is showing the importance of minerals. Minerals are also very important to mankind. Some are used as fuels. We have studied about minerals. For example, coal, natural gas, mineral oil and petroleum. These have been used as fuel. They are used in various industries and even for making medicines like iron, aluminium, gold, uranium, etc. This was about rock, the interior of the earth and this rock cycle. In the next part, we will study about formation of landforms.